University of Arizona, and today we're going to demonstrate grooming a horse with my friend, Midnight, who's a 28-year-old appendix quarter horse. And when we start with grooming, we have several different types of curry combs and shedding blades. You don't think about horses growing hair coats in Arizona, but they sure do. And just like you see Arizonans put on coats when you guys on the East Coast think it's really warm, we have horses that grow coats too. So depending on your horse might depend on what you choose for a grooming tool. So we'll start just with a shedding blade and some horses like this, some horses don't. We have a softer curry comb. We have a little bit hard, harder curry comb type and then also one that is very soft which is also potentially good for the face. But let's start with the shedding blade. So you can either do this closed or open. A lot of times you'll just start, of course you start at the shoulder, and then you work your way up to the neck. And if you just go nice and light, you can see she actually liked this. And you can see the hair coming off as well. So you can actually just do short, but fairly light in the direction of the coat, and you can see all that great hair that we're getting off and the birds will be very happy with this. This is something that you can do down on the front of the chest, down under, along the shoulder. Be careful when you get to less meaty parts or bony parts, but you'll also find that they really, really like it across their withers and you can see that you are just taking a, a good part of the excess hair out nice big clumps and so when they say Arizona won't grow a hair coat you can see the difference now. You can go down on the front and see her little nose right there. She says this feels awfully good. She says oh yes that feels good on an old lady. And then you can work down on the forearm where there's muscle. Below the forearm, there's tendons, ligaments, skin, and bone. So you do not want to go too far down. And of course, be gentle. So as you go through, you're going in the direction of the hair, and you are just gently, if they like it, you can go a little firmer. Some horses have different tolerances. And be careful as you go under the belly as well. So you can go under the belly, but be gentle and watch. Watch your horse's ears and you can see she's like, yeah, and feels good, but I'm not so sure. And always be in a safe place where you are close to the horse and watching what they're doing. And you can see old Midnight is letting go of a winter coat right now. And always keep your mouth closed while you're doing this, especially in the wind, or you will be picking hair out of your teeth. When you get to this area around your hip, you can be gentle, go the direction of the hair, and watch the horse because a lot of times they get more sensitive. You can also go across the butt, and sometimes you end up wearing more hair. We've got a little bit of wind here, which is in, working in my favor. So I'm upwind. And you can do this until you stop getting large amounts of hair or if they start getting tired of it and irritated. So you're starting at the shoulder because this is the least threatening place for you to approach. And then you work your way up to the head and you can give her a little scratch to know that she says, oh yeah, that feels pretty good. And always just be working with your horse, paying attention. So you can see she's still got stuff on her neck. And then of course you would do that on the other side. Okay, so we now have two different types of curry now that we've used, taken a lot of hair off of the shedding blade. My guess is she's not going to like this one very much because it's a little bit harsh. She says, nope, I won't. This one is a little bit softer. But again, we approach it, the shoulder, and this guy, so that feels pretty good on the neck. And we work up to the neck. And we can just use that 
and you can do it lighter or harder depending on your horse's response. She says that feels pretty good. But I'm guessing if we go down around to bonier parts on the old lady, she's not going to like this as much. But you can see there's still quite a bit of hair coming up. This one is a little bit softer. And again, the curry comb. Oh, yeah. You can do that in a circular motion. And again, a lighter or a harder touch depending on what they tolerate. And you can see that's getting hair out as well. And as you get to less muscled or more bony parts, be lighter with your touch. And she really likes it up under her chest. Feels pretty good, as you can tell by her lip. And then you can just shake that up. And of course, you're going to do that because you're stirring up all the dust and still hair, as you can see. She makes it on the withers. Keep your mouth closed. I'm going to drop this one because I know she doesn't care for that as much. And letting her know where you are all the time and what you're doing. Again, just on that forearm muscle. And then cleaning up the hair, getting a lot of the dust. And these Arizona horses get so much dust in them because we live out in the desert. And you can just see how brown, if I just go here, you can see the hair and the dirt that just a lot of sand and dirt. And I don't know if you ever get a Arizona horse all the way clean <laughs> without a bath. And then of course, first thing to do is roll. So the same thing, circular. You can see the hair coming off still. You can go up under the belly, but always watch to see what your horse is doing. And pay attention. Hindquarters. For all of you people that remember Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. Gentler when you're around bony areas or bony points, paying attention to what the horse is asking and how she's reacting. And she seems to like this. When you go down on that muscle, but I don't want to go down much further than that. All right, so our next is the stiff brush, dandy brush, hard brush. And it has stiffer bris bristles. And again, you're approaching at the shoulder and then working your way back up to the neck. And then you're going to do, in the direction of the hair, short, firm um, motion. And this is basically taking everything that you just curried to the surface out. You can see she kind of likes it. So do the different pressure according to how your horse acts. Does it feel pretty good, Mama? And this is an old lady. So of course, if she has bony areas, less pressure. But short, firm, with a little flick at the end to get off some of that junk that you just curried to the surface. Now on the stiff brush, depending on how hard they are, you can use a little bit stiffer motion on the muscle and then lighter on the leg. As you can see, like on this inside, she has some stuff and you can gently use it. But just remember, no muscle is bone, ligament, tendon, and skin below the knee and below the hock. So, as we work through, if you watch, you can see, especially on here, everything that hits the wind and goes away as I brush on her. And you can see her turning back to her natural color, gentler on her old spine. And then she's looking at me, but she says it still feels pretty good down around and of course you need to make sure that if you're going to ride that you get under the girth area cinch area and you feel and make sure that there's no mud clots there because those are notorious here in arizona in the spring 
So her belly, all the way up under. She says that feels pretty good. And down around hindquarters as well. And you can just do fairly quick. And you can see the stuff coming off right there. And she does not mind that. She thinks that feels pretty good. Where'd you go? Okay, so again, hind quarter. You can see all the junk that comes off. And this is taking off everything that you just stand up, hurried to the surface. And so you can use hind leg where the muscle is. And then you can do gently down the leg and down the inside of the other leg. Okay, so there's your dandy brush, stiff brush, hard brush. Okay, so our last brush is the soft brush. And again, approach at the shoulder, move towards the head. This is just kind of a finishing brush. I see. And you brush in the direction of the hair. Again, you can do a little bit longer stroke, but if you do a flick at the end, then it takes out everything that you just brought to the surface. And if you look here, you can see even with the shedding blade, the curry comb, the stiff brush, we are still getting stuff off of her. And so this is just a finishing. It will help bring the oils to the surface, which will give her a natural shine. You can use this all the way down her legs. It's nice and soft. You can feel, go all the way down, the nice shine. You can do the inside of her off leg. And you see that she does not mind that at all. Get below, get behind her pastern, under her fetlock, and put a nice shine on those legs. Okay, as you move back, you can still see the stuff coming off. And it's going to take several good groomings. But you can start to see she's getting a little bit of shine, even though you can still see dust. And you can still see dust coming off. I know, you see that dust? Little old lady. <laughs> okay, and then you brush up under her belly, same thing. And you can spend more time on this, obviously. And they really actually seem to enjoy, and it gives you time with your horse that's not you asking them to do stuff, but just spending time making them feel good and getting some good arm working at this time of year. And so again, hind leg all the way down, getting close to your horse, inside of the off, and that's the beginning point of the dandy brush. All right, so you can see what we did on the other side, and you can see that we would still need some good work on this side. But let's move to the tail. So when you're doing the tail, you pay attention to the horse. You'll always stand very close to the horse, and then you will bring the tail over here. So you don't want to stand directly behind the horse. Now, if you have long hair, you would never start at the top, because our goal is to lose as little hair as we can. So if you bring the horse's tail over to the side and you brush from the bottom, and you can also take pieces and brush from the bottom. If you were in a show saddlebred barn, they would not let you use a brush on that horse. You would all be doing this just with your fingers, and you can do that as well. So the whole point is to lose as little hair as possible and to have a nice enjoyable fresh tail for your horse to swap flies with and just to make them look extra special especially for this old lady. 
So again, just as if you had long hair, many of you ladies and those with man buns may understand this. Start from the bottom, work your way up. You can work in sections. But we want to stay close to her, pay attention to hind legs, pay attention to ears, and just sit and enjoying it. And then work your way through until you have a beautifully coiffed tail with no kicking, not a lot of hair loss, and just a nice tail for her to top off your grooming appearance. So you can see the difference in the bottom of that. We just work your way up. So we are going to pick out this horse's hooves. Hoof care is a very important part of the grooming process, keeping those hooves clean. Um, and free from built up manure and things like that really helps to keep, um, keep those hooves very healthy. We have our old trusty hoof pick here. As you can see, it's been around a while. Um, it's got the pick part on this side, and on the off side, we've got this brush that um, is pretty stiff and pretty useful for cleaning the last bits of debris out of the crevices and if there's mud caked on the front of the hoof wall or things like that. So, to get started, I'm going to stand at the horse's shoulder. I'm going to pick out this front foot first. I'm facing her hind end. I'm going to run my hand down the back of her leg and ask her to give me her foot. Which she's going to do very nicely, thank you. And so you can see we have quite a bit of stuff built up. And so I'm going to just gently start in this crevice and work my way down. Getting underneath all this debris. This isn't debris, this is um, a piece of shedding sole, it looks like. So I'm just going to pull that off. As you see, I'm picking away from, this is the heels to the toe, so I'm picking in a heel to toe motion here. And I'm just working my way underneath all these structures. And if you do choose to take the other direction, you have to be very careful that you don't dig too deep. Um, or slip and hit yourself or the horse or anything like that. I'm just going to keep going here. And get all of this stuff out. Got just a little bit in here I'm going to get at. There we go. See I'm sort of using a rotate flick kind of motion here. There. And so at this point, I've gotten the bulk of the debris out, and I can go back in with my brush side and just brush some of this stuff away. And then I can just gently set the foot back down. Now that we've done the front leg, we need to do the hind legs. So again, we start at the shoulder. I'm going to walk back. I'm still going to remain facing away from the horse. I'm very close to my horse. I've got um, my hand up here so I can kind of feel if she starts to shift or maybe um, is unhappy with what I'm doing. I'm going to run my hand down the back of the leg just like I did before. I'm pick this foot up and bring it slightly back. She's a little bit stiff because she's 28 years old. There we go. And I'm going to follow the same process, picking out from the heel to the toe. And if I do choose to go the other way, I'm doing these gentle little rocks as opposed to a full pull so that I don't hit myself or the horse. I'm just going to keep going until we get all the debris. Just a little bit more in here. A little bit more right here. And then I'm going to gently set it back down. Alright, so now we are going to groom this horse's face. Um, she actually really likes having her face groomed. Some horses are a little less amenable to that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and untie her with my slip knot. And I'm going to place this lead rope over my shoulder. I'm not going to loop it around my shoulder. I'm not going to wrap it around my arm. That's not a safe uh, way to do it just in case she does decide to take off. I don't want that wrapped around my arm. Thank you.
So I'm going to untie this halter and I'm just going to leave it around her neck. So I'm going to drop it off of her nose. No, no, keep your head up. And we're just going to go around her neck. So I still have control, but I'm now free to groom her face. Number one, this is our really soft nubbed curry comb. It's really soft and gentle, so she likes it. So I'm going to start by showing it to her, letting her smell. I often will also start with my hand, just so that she knows I'm coming for her face. And then we're just going to gently work this curry, and I'm using a very light touch, kind of letting her show me how much pressure she wants. And she will actually brush herself a little bit. As you can see, she's very much enjoying this. And we are getting a lot of hair off. And I'm kind of working in that same circular motion that Betsy demonstrated earlier. And we can even go and do a little bit on the cheek and up under the jaw and behind the ears. Just loosening up all of this hair. Yes, back on the forehead. I know that's your favorite. And now that we've got, you can see we've loosened up quite a bit of hair here. And so now that we've loosened up all that hair, we can take our really soft brush. Um, they make even smaller ones than this. This is a regular size brush, but it's very soft. And I'm just going to use a nice motion in the direction of the hair growth. And we're just going to remove all of that hair that we loosened up from her.